Hello, my name is John Hoopenthal. I am the elected superintendent of public instruction for the state of Arizona. Paul Kim invited me to provide a segment for his massively open online course on education theory. In order to properly understand the project that I'm working on, you need to first understand the concept of cultural traps. Therefore, my segment comes in two pieces, one on cultural traps and the second on a new theory and practice of learning. One of the fundamental duties of leadership is to break through cultural traps. In order to do this, we must acknowledge that we are all culturally trapped. What is an example of a cultural trap? In ancient Europe, when they first domesticated the horse, they took the yoke off of the ox and put it on the horse. Because of the anatomy of the ox and the horse are so different, the yoke was literally choking the horse. They were only getting 25% of the pulling power of the horse by doing this. The farmers just accepted the forms and structures that they had experienced their entire lives and through previous generations. So, how many years did it take them to redesign the yoke? The answer is over 700 years. They were culturally trapped for those 700 years. Transitioning to education, we have yoked the brains of our students. We are getting less than 25% of the pulling power, not only of our students' brain power, but also of our educational system's potential to teach. We can get as much as two times academic gain by redesigning the educational yoke. We get a glimmer of this in Arizona when we see thousands of students outperforming their IQ in academic achievement by more than 40 percentile points. We have thousands of students with IQs below the 50th percentile performing above the 95th percentile in academic achievement. When Einstein developed his famous E equal MC squared equation, he almost immediately knew that the atomic bomb was the ultimate expression of E equal MC squared. It was just a question of figuring out the mechanics of creating the bomb. When we see thousands of students outperforming their IQ by 40 percentile points, it's just a question of figuring out the mechanics of how you redesign the educational system to get every student outperforming their IQ by 50 percentile points. Once those ancient farmers observed that the yoke was choking the horse, it was just a question of the mechanics on how to, how to redesign the yoke to create the harness and get the full pulling power of the horse. So how do we get the most pulling power in education and break through our cultural traps? Number one, we start with a new theory of learning. You might call it the E equal MC squared of education. Number two, we redesign the classroom around this new theory of learning. Number three, we put this new classroom in the laboratory and prove that it can break through the speed of sound in education. And then finally, we move from the laboratory out into our schools and sh show that we can get those same gains in real practice. Now what is the speed of sound in education? The science of psychometrics allows us to search across schools and school districts to define our current limits. When we do this, we find schools that are able to, on a sustained basis, move at about one and a half times the average rate of progress. Are cultural traps that simple? In the 1930s, Robert B. Goddard developed a rocket. That incredible mind that developed the rocket control systems was powerful enough to know not only the consequences of the rocket, but also what it would mean for the future. And so he began to speak out in public about the future. He talked about the fact that we would be able to travel to the moon. He was doing this way back in the 1930s. And, but he became a national laughingstock as a result of those speeches. Cultural traps can be vicious. When innovation challenges social norms, innovators are brutally treated. This is especially true in education. This is where leadership is always important. We as leaders need to provide protection, we need to provide oxygen, and we need to provide the limelight to our innovators in education that are pushing the speed of sound. In my next segment, we're going to talk about a whole new theory of memory that enables us to break through to higher levels of academic productivity in education. We're going to show that the human mind is capable of developing at at least twice its current speed. And, and once you do this, high school collapses back into grade school and college collapses back into high school. We are right now on the verge of this new enormous breakthrough. It's all going to take place in the next decade.
It's going to be the most exciting time to be in education. And we, you and I, are along for this journey. Thank you.